How would you describe yourself? I am a teenage girl. I'm also a soccer player. I'm also an artist. I'd like to think I'm funny. I love hanging out with my friends. I'm also transgender, and I'm proud of that. But you know, in the end, all these things come together and really just make me jazz. So I am jazz. Ugh, look, there's Brody Jenner. God, what a douchebag. I can't believe that came out of Bruce Jenner's vagina. Bruce Jenner is a man. No, Brian. That's what the press would have you believe, but he's not. Bruce Jenner is a woman. An elegant, beautiful Dutch woman. Why did I decide to do a series? People don't understand looking into the mirror and nothing seems right. Putting on clothes that you just really don't identify with. This is about getting to be who you really are. It's going to be quite a journey. We're going to do some good. A standing ovation tonight for an athlete who became an American hero at the Olympics and may now be changing America itself. Caitlyn Jenner kissing her mother and then walking to the stage at the ESPYs right here on ABC to accept the Arthur Ashe Courage Award. It's been eye-opening, inspiring, but also frightening. All across this country right now, all across the world, at this very moment, there are young people coming to terms with being transgender. The chiseled sportsman with the all-American good looks setting a world record in the grueling decathlon in the 1976 Olympics. I know I'm clear with my responsibility in going forward to do whatever I can to reshape the landscape of how trans issues are viewed. And while it may not be easy to get past the things you always don't understand, I want to prove that it is absolutely possible if we only do it together. Dun 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 <laughs> Cooper, I am your father. No, no, no. I am your father. <laughs> That's got to be the worst Vader ever. <laughs> Campbell's Star Wars Soups. How about you be Chewbacca? <laughs> made for real, real life. Kohl's has a new commercial for the holiday featuring a brief appearance from a same-sex couple. Seven, eight, nine, ten, I love you. Oh, 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 look at me. Target's liberal bathroom position is getting backlash from consumers. Two weeks ago, the store stated that customers and employees can use the restroom or fitting room that corresponds with their gender identity. Customer surveys from two separate research firms show Target's reputation has since fallen dramatically. You have man parts, you go to a man bathroom. If you have lady parts, you go to a lady bathroom. More than one million people have signed a boycott petition from the American Family Association. The group says Target's policy is, quote, exactly how sexual predators get access to their victims. Moments ago, the Supreme Court and this landmark ruling, the court uh, making same-sex legal, same-sex marriage legal in this country across every state in this nation. Going into today, 37 states in Washington, D.C., uh, 13 states illegal, but those 37 states had same-sex marriage, and now that will change uh, in all 50 states. I want to get back to John Carl at the White House because, John, two days in a row, uh, yesterday, the Supreme Court, uh, for the second time, handing the president a victory. And uh, as we just learned, the president has tweeted he would consider this a victory at the court as well for his policy. I'm announcing today that we're ending the ban on transgender Americans in the United States military. 
effective immediately, transgender Americans may serve openly, and they can no longer be discharged or otherwise separated from the military just for being transgender. The reality is that we have transgender service members serving in uniform today. Well, morning, Ainsley. Morning, guys. The White House, via the Justice Department, is now saying that the same law that protects children from discrimination based either on race or on gender now applies to gender identity. So transgender kids have that same protection, equating gender and gender identity as equally protected groups. This is a big change, although it's important to point out that nowhere in Title IX does the word transgender or gender identity appear. The DOJ doesn't think that matters. Fox News has obtained a letter going out from the DOJ offering guidance to schools, saying a school may not require transgender students to use facilities inconsistent with their gender identity or to use individual user facilities when other students are not required to do so. Breaking that down, a biologically male student can use the female locker room all they want. Extend the logic out, a biologically male student can demand to live in a female dorm room when they go to college. The issue came to a head earlier in the week when North Carolina defied a government order over its so-called bathroom bill. That law requires people to use the bathroom of their birth gender rather than what gender they identify with. North Carolina and the Justice Department are now countersuing each other over this ruling, meaning it's possible that the courts could either totally nullify what the DOJ has put out or they could agree with the administration. At stake, of course, are billions of dollars in federal education money for schools that choose to defy this new decree from the Obama administration and its Justice Department, guys. Hmm. A lot of money at line, on the line there. Yeah. All right, Leland, thank you very much. A lot of money that schools can't afford to lose. Hmm. And I look forward to new adventures as we grow old together, happy and secure in who we really are. Thank you. President Barack Obama has appointed Rafi Friedman Gerspen as the White House primary LGBT liaison, making her the first transgender person in the role. LGBT leaders across the country applaud this announcement. Every year we set aside this month to celebrate uh, the ways that so many Lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender Americans have helped to make our union just a little more perfect. Uh, we honor the countless nameless heroes who paved the way for progress, the activists who marched, the advocates who organized, the lawyers who argued cases, the families who stood by their loved ones, uh, even when it was tough, every brave American who came out and spoke out, especially when it was tough. Generations of couples uh, who insisted that love is love, uh, we now live in an America where all of our marriages and our families are recognized as equal under the law. President Obama designated New York's Stonewall Inn as America's first national monument to gay rights Friday. The Greenwich Village Gay Bar was the site of the Stonewall riots in 1969 when bar patrons clashed with police over frequent raids of the establishment. And on behalf of the entire Boston City Council, I just want to give a very, very special thank you to Mayor Walsh for flying the transgender flag, this transgender pride flag, the symbol of inclusion and pride and diversity.
Kim Davis sits behind bars for taking a stand and refusing to issue marriage licenses to anyone in her tiny Kentucky county. In doing so, she's become a national symbol for many who oppose gay marriage because of their faith. Under Why? whose authority are his you authority. not issuing his authority. authority? The gay couple suing Davis had asked that she be fined, but in a surprise move, the federal judge decided to put her in jail instead, saying just a fine wouldn't be enough to bring about her compliance. At the last minute, Davis rejected a deal to allow her deputies to process same-sex marriage licenses that could have prompted her release. She's been ordered to stay there until she's willing to change her mind, until she's willing to change her conscience about what that belief is. Within hours of the judge's order, several Republican presidential candidates declared their support for Davis. Mike Huckabee said it removes all doubt of the criminalization of Christianity in our country. Who will be next? Pastors, photographers, caterers, florists. This is a reckless, appalling, out-of-control decision that undermines the Constitution and our fundamental right to religious liberty. The Ohio Judicial Board has ruled judges cannot refuse to perform same-sex weddings based on personal or moral or religious beliefs. The board also says judges who stop performing all marriages to avoid marrying same-sex couples may be considered biased. Those judges could then be disqualified from any case where sexual orientation is an issue. The, ruling... the Colorado Court of Appeals upheld a ruling that a Christian baker must make wedding cakes for same-sex couples or be fined. In 2012, Jack, Jack Phillips of Masterpiece Cake Shop in Lakewood refused to make a wedding cake for a same-sex couple. The couple filed a civil rights complaint. A judge then ruled Phillips discriminated against the couple, and the judge ordered him to change his store policy or face fines ranging from $50 to $500. Phillips appealed the ruling, saying he has no problem serving gays at his store, but says making a wedding cake for gay couples violates his Christian beliefs. A Texas teacher is fighting back after being fired following her refusal to identify a six-year-old girl as a boy. The six-year-old is transgendered. Dale Hurd is on this story. We should be able to stand up for our rights without getting terminated for it. Lawyers for a Texas teacher have filed a federal discrimination lawsuit after she says she was fired for refusing to address a six-year-old girl as a transgender boy. Madeline Kirksey and co-worker Akeisha Wyatt say a six-year-old girl came to the Children's Lighthouse Learning Center in Katy, Texas, wanting to be called a boy. The child's same-sex parents presented her as transgender. I took a stance, first off, because of my beliefs. Um, I trust God. Um, and secondly, I stood up for the protection of all the children. The teachers say the child seemed confused about her gender, at times claiming she was a girl and using the girl's restroom. Their attorney filed a complaint on the basis of their religious beliefs, race, age and gender. A spokesman for the Children's Lighthouse Learning Centers told TV station KTRK via iPhone that he believes this is simply part of a bigger national agenda on transgender rights. I was very struck and appreciative of the uh, car you saw outside, painted in pride colors, a real act of solidarity and a show of the NYPD's deep connection to this community and to communities all over the city. When we celebrate pride, we do it with particular passion. And uh, this year, we have an obligation to our nation. Erin O'Flaherty was crowned Miss Missouri early this month. Uh, and come September, she is going to be the first openly gay Miss America contestant in that pageant's 95-year history. And I want to show you this picture from this past weekend. It was the Gay Pride event in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, there she is, surrounded by rainbows and uh, lots of drag queens, too, uh, and a lot of smiles.
When you open up a can, you may not notice the lining inside. But believe it or not, that lining may contain a synthetic estrogen. That's right, a sex hormone. And it's in almost every single can we consume. As part of a Fox 5 investigation, we decided to have some of the cans of food you eat every day tested. And wait until you see the results. This could be your table any day of the week. A delicious plate of pasta topped with tomato sauce, some hearty soup, a tuna fish sandwich, a side of green peas. Food that millions of Americans consume daily. But wait until you see what could be inside your food. This is a chemical that the people who put it into plastic were insane. His name is Dr. Fred Vomsall. He's a professor of biology at the University of Missouri. You may not know his name, but you probably know his work. He recently created a huge uproar within the scientific community after releasing a study on plastic baby bottles and the controversial chemical many of these bottles are made with, called bisphenol A. This is a chemical that in 1936 was considered for use as a estrogen drug. Then in the 1950s, some tricky chemists found that they could link this chemical together and it creates a hard, clear, glass-like plastic. And this glass-like plastic is sprayed into cans we buy every day. The only problem with that is the plastic is then made from a sex hormone. And it's virtually in every can of food we consume. And according to Dr. Vom Sahl, Bisphenol A is a big problem because he says it leaches into the foods we eat. And when you heat this plastic or put tomato sauce in it, the acid degrades the plastic and then the food that's in there is full of this sex hormone. So we decided to do our own tests of common foods we eat every day. We went to different grocery stores and purchased tomato sauces, soups, peas, tuna fish, as well as plastic containers and food wraps. We then sent them all to Dr. Von Saul's lab in Missouri for testing. The food was removed from the cans. The cans were all cleaned, washed multiple times with water, allowed to dry, and then we put ultra pure water in the cans to determine how stable the lining of the can was when just faced with water being in contact with it for 24 hours. The results were concerning. Every single product here put out an amount of bisphenol A that would be in the danger zone. The highest levels measured in micrograms were found in cans of Hunt's tomato sauce, followed by Red Pack, Del Monte peas, the Starkist tuna, and the Rubbermaid plastic container. This is a chemical that can alter the way your cells function at below a trillionth of a gram. Schools in Fairfax County, Virginia are preparing to include gender identity in its curriculum for grades 7 through 12. The family life education lessons will include teachings on heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, and transgender identity. Andrea Lafferty of Traditional Values Coalition joins us from our Washington Bureau to talk more about this controversial subject. Andrea, thanks for joining us. It's great to be with you. Thank you. First of all, tell us about this curriculum and the motivation behind it. Well, it's interesting. Um, the school board voted uh, earlier in May to add gender identity. It's not a part of the state law. It's not a part of the uh, state school board instruction, but they've decided to add it against the will of many of the parents. It's starting in kindergarten, they'll talk to them about same-sex or gay marriage. Um, and the, ch the parents will not be able to opt out. In eighth grade, they will be discussing, let me just say, Bill Clinton's activity along with oral and anal. Um, 
in eighth grade, and most people, and, that, and they've lowered it from ninth grade, or teaching fourth graders about the word incest. The difference between sexual orientation and gender identity is sexual orientation is who you have sex with and how you have sex. Gender identity is who you are, male, female, are you born male or female? Are you born nothing? And they want to break down those definitions so you're no longer male or female as God created us. The night of the vote on gender identity, they, the police, they hired a special police force, security. They actually locked 200 parents out so they couldn't get in, um, even though there was standing room in the back. Parents need to be very engaged. Parents need to know what is going on in their local communities. Um, we're seeing just an onslaught. This thing is snowballing. And so we would just encourage you to protect your children and know what they're being taught. Here in Fairfax County, we were told that the Office of Civil Rights um, at Department of Education and Department of Justice would see to it that our federal tax dollars were pulled those monies that are meant to help educate and provide for under um, poor children, children that may be going without meals, that funding would be taken. So here we hear all this outcry about Republicans are, you know, not looking out for kids when in fact, when the president and his allies want to push this, this gender identity agenda, they don't care about poor children. Henri Fuentes was tired of being a spectator. I did trial last year. I didn't make it. I feel like I didn't work as hard last year as I did this year. Go Kyle. Henri's hard work paid off. She made Denaire High School's varsity cheerleading squad. But soon after making the team, Henri made a decision that would also make history in Denaire. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to be under the lights and a skirt, you know, but. Then I finally decided, I was like, no, I want to wear the girl uniform. Born Henry, Henri says she always felt like a girl and would wear female clothes. But she officially started living as a girl this okay. year. The Disney Channel sitcom Good Luck Charlie introduced the network's first openly gay characters. Parents of the young Charlie have set up a play date with one of Charlie's friends named Taylor. And there Taylor is and just happens to have two moms. So Disney reps released a statement saying, like all Disney Channel programming, it was developed to be relevant to kids and families around the world and to reflect the themes of diversity and inclusiveness. I was always a really rebellious kid. I acted up at school with family. Um, I partied a lot. And when I was 15, I started dating girls and continued to be in that lifestyle uh, for the next seven years. Um, I had a lot of people speak out to me, but I ignored most of it. In April, some women that I work with started up a Bible study, and I work with my aunt, and she came to me and asked me if I would be a part of it. And I didn't want to make her have to tell them no. Uh, her niece wasn't going to do it, and so I agreed to go, um, but told myself initially that the second someone said anything about my lifestyle, uh, that I would leave and I would be done with it. I was at home reading our book, and it was talking about picking and choosing different religions, like different parts of it, and combining those and making it re your religion. And it hit me that that's exactly what I was doing. First thing I did, 
uh, like they were going to change somehow, was search for the verses on homosexuality and where I could bend them before, and I did, arguing against people, um, making them sound less concrete. Uh, I couldn't. They were black and white, and I realized I was wrong for the first time about something big like that, and it kind of shook me. I knew that I was going to leave my room either a Christian, like a, a real surrendered Christian, or I was going to be an atheist that rejected the God of the Bible entirely. And I clung to him. I was scared. And I knew that he had died for me. Like everything came together at one time. Like this is what they were talking about. This is what they meant. This is why he had to die for me. This is how it affects me now. And I was grateful. Uh, I felt awful that for the first 22 years I'd acted like that. I felt awful that I'd ignored him and that I had made my own decisions. I acted like that and called myself a Christian while doing it. And he gave me mercy anyway. So that was it. I surrendered everything to him. So now I'm talking to as many people as I can, contacting friends, the ones that are still, you know, accepting phone calls. And I'm going to school to be a biblical counselor so I can help other people. He saved me from more than just me. I'm not gonna waste any of that. So I'm gonna let him get the most glory for it by talking to as many people as I can because he is bigger and he is better than any sin and he is enough.